Okay, here we are. I'm driving up to check on the condition and the resources available of the Grand Junction High School cafeteria. I thought I would shoot some video of what the school looks like through the side door of my 2004 Toyota Matrix. That's been totaled once and so I got a great deal on it. Uh, here we go. School looks essentially the same as you all remember. They haven't painted the brick. They have scrubbed off the graffiti in a few places. Other than that, it's all looking good. We're gonna go in through this, uh, oh, let's go through the commons area door. See what it looks up, what it looks like here. Here we go. Okay, I knew some of you would need to see what the uh, Martin Mortuary area looks like over there uh, where you went during PE. Uh, let's see. Here's the basic appearance of the building itself. In the school. It's kind of shady today. Or the sun's bright. We're at the wrong angle, but camera should adjust. This campus, not a lot has changed here. The windows are different, I think, on the library, I think, but I'm not sure. Anyway. And then here's the area where like the orange and black was and all of that stuff. Science science classes etc. It's really dark. I'll try to get a better angle. Okay, the landscaping is different and the trees are all bigger, but uh, here you can see this is where the little breezeway was between a lot of the buildings, like I said, where they did science and the orange and black and all of those things. Yearbook. And, uh, in fact, I think Right over here is where we had our orange and black. And at the time, yep, look right there. And uh, I didn't know that, I don't know, I had some classes here, I think. You can see here, walking around, and this leads us to the commons area. So if we turn around, if you remember backwards, that leads you to the front of the high school. And welcome to the office. And we go through these windows here. They have a new, uh, probably senior gift there, that mural. And then there. Over here. Go into the kitchen or cafeteria area. The library is over here. I don't think much has changed. Now it's called the Media Center. There's the library. Not much different, but uh, probably fewer books. More open space. Okay, I kind of went down here anyway, but I thought I would go back through just really quick. Here's the stairwell. I'll go upstairs on the other side. Go down through here. Here's the office. There's Ed. Have a good one now. Thanks. Teacher's workroom. Shoot across there and that's what takes you to the auditorium. More stairs. Avoiding the stairs. Harder to go up than they used to be. Um, so they must have done something to them. The lockers are the same color, probably never painted. How you doing? Computer rooms, room 102. I think I had a class there. Here we go. See if this will even let us go in. Hoping it does. Upstairs. It's dark up here. I'm not going to go into any of the classrooms because they're locked.
the Pepsi machines have been replaced with Coke machines. I think they were all Pepsi machines before. But I don't remember. There's the door out. Door to the front. See, I don't think we can get out of her. The auditorium, I think, is all locked up. This is back down the office hallway. Big murals. And that about gets us there. Okay, I'm going down this hall backwards. This is the hallway to the gym, sports area. Turn around here. The reason I went down backwards is because it's dark right here. And there'd be nothing to see. It would be scary. There's the band room. Really nothing's changed for the most part. It's pretty straightforward. Looks just like it used to. Except different murals on the walls. Some uh different names around the hallways. They have added this little area. Now see right outside normally here's the, the gym. They're refinishing the floor. That's why there's a guy with a gas mask sitting in the middle of the floor. Okay. Then we come down here. This is one thing they've added on is if we go out, this used to be the doors to the outside, I think, and now they have this big extra area here. Kind of an entryway. And uh, I think that's about it. Kind of the same sort of thing over here. I think that also used to be the outside, but I can't remember when they built that on. Okay, I thought we'd do something else. I wanted to show you. Here we go, We're going out. As you can see, they've caged in the uh, field all the way through here. I don't know whether that's to keep people in or out, but it's fairly low, too low to do both. Maybe just keep the cars out, keep people from burning stuff in there. I don't know. Tennis courts all look the same. Probably, I don't know, I'm not an expert on tennis courts, but they look like tennis courts to me. Now, come down here. I just have to show you this. None of you will be surprised. Let's see, we have this road right here in front of us here, and my really dirty windshield with a crack in it. Watch this. Ready? You won't even need to really see. But they have, uh, at one time, not recently, but at one time, they've actually fixed the potholes uh, throughout this area. There are a bunch right here, so they're starting to come back. But uh, everyone couldn't believe it. At one time, they actually fixed the potholes. And this area right here is nice, smooth concrete. Still one way, and uh, there's still a stop sign at the other end of the street, which makes me wonder why they have the one-way sign. But that's, uh, that's what we're looking like here. This up in front is an REI now. I don't remember what it was, whether it was a Safeway or what it was when we were in school, but it's an REI. It might have even been an REI, who knows. Uh, let's see, let's go this way. We're gonna turn right out of the school. Or turn, yeah, turn right. There's a car wash right here, great big one, where something else used to be. Those of you who left probably remember better than those of us who stayed. There's Martin Mortuary, and uh, you'll be surprised to see there's a big old fence over here. And, uh, and no fountain that you can get into. So uh, it's kind of hard to soak the fountain. Over here is the buildings where the uh, shop and all those things used to be. However, now Mesa College 
Colorado Mesa University has now joined up with the high school um, to offer the shop classes and things like that through their technical uh, school. So now kids get shipped over to uh, the little what used to be UTech or I don't remember what they called it back then. Uh, that's a doctor's office over there. And uh, up here everything pretty much looks the same. That's been four car dealers, but it's still a car dealership, just like it used to be. Although it's changed hands and names several times. The meat market's still there. Lots of car dealers up here. This is now Artist's Haven. It used to be a lumber store, now it's an art supply store. Um, old Chicago. Right here on the corner, it used to be a steakhouse or something. I don't remember what it was when we were in school. Now there's a whole area up here, if you go through the first and north area and don't hit the guy on the bike uh, and just wait for the red light here, right up here and then the first right out of here gets you to uh, one of the better sushi places in Grand Junction. Uh, I think the only sushi place in Grand Junction when we were in high school was Heroes, and nobody ever ate there because we didn't know what sushi was. Um, but this is a a pretty nice uh, little shopping center up over here, where uh, Pioneer, or sorry, Pyramid Printing used to be here. Um, and this is No Coast Sushi. That's a pretty nice little restaurant. Um, and the sushi is affordable. It's you know it's expensive as you know sushi is always a little pricier, but it's it's pretty affordable and pretty good stuff. Um, then come out of this lot here and I'm gonna turn this off and then start when we're headed back towards the mall. Okay I just turned right out of the No Coast Sushi parking lot and uh, now we're heading out uh, down 6 and 50 towards the mall. Big used car dealership there. See so if you want to buy a car there's lots of places to do it. Let me turn off my air conditioner and turn it down a little bit so you can hear me better. Okay, now over here is the new Walmart. The old Walmart is now lovingly referred to throughout town as the Ghetto Walmart. We have an American Furniture Warehouse. Uh, <laughs> American Furniture Warehouse. Let me get that right. Um, and uh, American Furniture Warehouse uh, is uh, about as big or close to the size of an Ikea, but uh, not quite so Swedish in the furniture styles. Um, over here is Sam's Club. I think that was built uh, while we were in high school. I think that was, was there. I can't remember. I know I worked there while I was a freshman in college. Um, a Golden Corral, another auto dealership. Back Porch Music is still there. If you want to buy a guitar um, or tickets to whatever classic rock events going on down around town, which isn't very many. There's a Chick fil A right there. And we're going to turn in and we'll go around the parking lot here. i got to show you how these streets go through. They're doing some road construction here to widen the streets. Uh, this area is, is really busy and there's always something going on. Uh, there's a Red Robin right there. Hamburgers. And I'll pop, stop this while we're waiting at the light. That's green. We're going. Here we go. Let's hope we can get through the light. Lots of left turn arrows. I've learned that uh, through city planning and stuff at one point somebody told me that because of the well in the 90s when Grand Junction had such a high senior population that they put a lot of left turn signals throughout town um, to make it easier for the seniors to be able to get around and brave the busy intersections. Now this over here at the right is a Lowe's and uh, over here if people tell you that uh, Grand Junction has an Apple store they're actually talking about the Simply Mac and it's a Apple approved uh, repair center and they sell Macs too but uh, but it's not a real Apple store. And right here this is the Rimrock Walmart the quote unquote nicer Walmart. Right here's the dollar store so if you need something uh, this is a place to get it for a dollar. Dollar Tree and if you need a mattress there's this they don't like you to go in and just jump up and down and play on the mattresses though. You have to actually be going in there to buy something. You get chased out. Um, and then right here is the Lowe's. And then just recently, um, if 
you remember Teller Arms down where Hastings is, <clears throat> that's where uh, Hobby Lobby used to be. If you remember, I can't remember what was built when, but there was a Hobby Lobby. Now they've moved the Hobby Lobby down here uh, to the west end of town, and we have a Hobby Lobby and a Sprouts. And Sprouts is like the uh, uh, less stuffy Trader Joe's or something. It's a natural food store, kind of has a uh, farmer's market aesthetic to it. I think they've got them in a few places around. Um, but uh, pretty good place for cheap Noosa yogurt or whatever you're after. I will head out here. Again, uh, Sam's Club is direct directly across the street from here on 6 and 50. If you use your Google Maps, you'll be able to figure out where we're at. Uh, we now have a Del Taco. And I haven't talked to anybody who's actually eaten there yet, but that was built a few weeks ago. And uh, we're kind of taking the back way here because there's so much road construction. That's 6 and 50 over to the right of us, which would be uh, to the south as we drive down this little frontage road. I'm going to turn this off while we're driving down the frontage road because uh, the roads are bad and there's really nothing to see other than train tracks. And so uh, this is... Uh, this is just kind of where we're at here, the back side or the south side of North Avenue. Okay, we're coming to the end of that little frontage road and getting ready to get back on the highway or North Avenue. Over here is Bananas Fun Park, which is your typical small town or suburb town uh, laser tag place and and go bumper cars or go kart sorry go karts and stuff. This is one of the coolest car washes in town. The vacuums and the air pump air uh, hose are always free. And uh, the car washes start at seven bucks for just rinsing it off with water, which is uh, the cheaper way to do it. Um, <clears throat> down this hall, down this way right here is a new little frontage road. That's uh, kind of how you'd get to, I don't know, Office Depot. There's not a lot down there. There's no more Circuit Cities open, um, and everything else is on the north side of uh, North Avenue. There's a Noodles and Company. Um, up ahead, there's also Ross Dress for Less, TJ Maxx, Petco, Sportsman's Warehouse, um, and uh, oh, a Bed Bath and Beyond, and or I think I said Ross Dress for Less. Oh, and uh, an Old Navy. So all that stuff's up there that you'd expect to be in a strip mall. There's a Johnny Carino's, or is they, I think they're called Carino's now. They went through that major name change. And uh, Big O Tires is still up there where it always was. Carl's is right there. Um, Genghis Grill is up ahead and Cold Stone. So, you know, we're official megalopolis now that we've got a strip mall like that. Um, then on up ahead, Office Depot moved across the street from where it was when Circuit City went out of business because Circuit City uh, had a little bit bigger building. So now Office Depot and Circuit City up here, and uh, where Office Depot used to be is your tractor supply place. So if you need any tractor supplies while in town, that might be a good place to go. Otherwise, we have Murdoch's up in the Orchard Mesa end of town. Now we're going to go right here. And uh, as we go through here, there's the Red Lobster. I know some of you who used to work there. And uh, Burger King. And over here where Toys R Us used to be is now a Best Buy. So it went from the place where I buy toys to the place I buy toys as I got older. This here is the Carmike Cinema what should be the dollar theater now. It's in really rough shape on the inside. Uh, the surround sound is probably far less impressive than what most people have at home. Um, and it's pretty rough. And then up here, this is a Barnes and Noble. I think that, I can't remember if that went in while we were in high school or not. We have a Barnes and Noble. I'm gonna turn right here. Or turn left right here. I'm gonna go straight. Now up ahead is a really nice Goodwill. So if you Need your Goodwill supplies. There's some up ahead there, about another oh, quarter mile up the street. I'm going to wait at this red light, turn off the camera. Okay, the mall, other than the stores that are in it, have all changed, as you'd expect. And just like any other mall, we do have a Hot Topic, if you want something like that. Um, but uh, really, there's nothing new about the mall. Uh, they've done some stuff. Uh, you'll just have to walk through it when you're here. Uh, here's the liquor barn, great big old liquor store, but they also sell meat now, so meat and liquor. Uh, the Home Depot is still up here, little shopping center with Petco, and all of those things. But what I'm taking you up to is uh, to 24 Road. So if you look up 24 Road and Patterson um, on your uh, Google Maps, 
uh, then you'll kind of be able to see where we're at. We're approaching Sutherlands, which I'm 98% sure was there when we were in high school. Now right up here, we come up to another strip mall. This is where you find your Cafe Rio, um, which is great. Everybody floods it the first few weeks it opens and then they realize it's too sweet to be real Mexican food so they quit eating there. Um, but it's it's still there and people eat there for lunch. Um, the uh, other side over here as soon as I can go. Here we go. Uh, this is the strip mall that you probably know as the Kohl's strip mall. Uh, it has everything every other Kohl's strip mall has. We have the Kohl's, the David's Bridal, the Lane Bryant, the Shoe Carnival, the Dress Barn, Ulta, that's makeup and stuff. Uh, we have all of that now. Um, that's your typical stuff you see there. I don't know if anybody shops at those places. I've been into Kohl's, but as you can imagine, I don't really have much of a need to shop at these other places. Um, shoe Carnival is, is I, I don't understand. Anyway, um, and then on up here, this is what I'm trying to take you to here. There's two things. One, on the right, and this is on uh, about F and a half and 24 road. Um, and uh, this is called GJ Scores. You can kind of see through here. It was a big bowling alley. And they built it. It stayed open for between two and four years. Um, had laser tag, all kinds of stuff like that. It was great. Uh, but nobody ever went there because it was way too expensive for families and everybody else didn't want to drive this far back when it used to be a long ways and so they shut down pretty quick um, but they are apparently being bought by a place called uh, Family Fun Center and it's gonna open back up and hopefully they're cheaper because uh, you know, 30 bucks for a game of bowling was just not feasible for most people this is the other place I was gonna take you to uh, this guy is stopped here at a uh, no stop sign area so I'm gonna just go ahead and go this is the Regal 14 uh, cinemas and this is the nice theater in town but uh, for adults nine dollars for a matinee and for kids eight dollars for a matinee um, there's also the Candlewood Suites down over there uh, the, the evening prices I think are 1050 or maybe they've gone up to 1150 I can't remember um, we're going to head back up and I'll show you one more thing. Okay, City Market, which I think in high school, while we were while we were in high school, it got bought up by Kroger's. Um, I may be wrong on that. I can't remember when it got bought up by Kroger's. Now it has King Super's trucks there. But City Market is uh, has opened up a really nice new store over here. If you need groceries, this is kind of where all the cool kids hang out here. And uh, they've got all the stuff you'd expect from a really nice grocery store. Okay, we're leaving the city market parking lot. I just stopped it for a second to let the video save. Got a nice bank over here. This is the si city. Uh, sorry, this is the side of town. It's really expanding and turning nice. Uh, community hospital is going to move out here. A lot of businesses are moving out this direction. This is the. Uh, west end of town, kind of the northwest end of town. Okay, I had to turn around the other way because I was headed towards the adult bookstore. That's not where I wanted to go. Um, here we go with another strip mall with a cherry berry and a restaurant. One of these doomed places that just can't seem to hold a high class breakfast place. Uh, it just keeps going out of business. But there's a Starbucks there and a gas station. Now we're going to go up onto the Redlands via the Redlands Parkway. So uh, let's uh, Put it on pause while we wait for the red light. Okay, we're going up over the Redlands Parkway. This is the area that connects um, 24 Road to the Redlands. So we're going to drive up over that area. Um, see, there's a kind of a view of Grand Junction there. My finger's not in the way. This is where you bicycle, all that stuff. Nothing's really changed out here. Still looks like the parkway. But I'm going to take you to a little area that uh, is fairly new interesting. As we go up here, there's the river walk they were heavily working on throughout our middle school and high school years. And uh, I'm just going to go on up the parkway and then I'll turn it back on when we get up to the top. Okay, we're on the Redlands, um, but I'm going. I'm not going to record very much up here. I just was going to show you uh, that we are on the Redlands, getting into the parkway, just approaching Broadway. Once we get to Broadway, I'll turn it off because really nothing's changed there. Um, and you'll see it when you come here if it's really that interesting to you. Um, 
but I did want to get to the Redlands Broadway area so you'd at least be familiar with the site of the monument and all the things we used to see there. Okay, now this is the area, uh, the ridges, if you'll remember the, the ridges area uh, on the Redlands. We're turning south up into the, up into the Redlands and going to this area called the ridges. Now, um, I, after, let's see, it was while we were it was after we graduated. I'm 98% sure on that. Uh, well, actually, yeah, it would have been sometime between the 96 and and, uh, and 2000, or sorry, 96, yeah, 96 and 2009. Uh, during that era, during that time, Grand Junction went through another boom and uh, mostly another oil boom, natural gas, things like that. And uh, so a lot of people made a lot of money during that time. And so we went through a lot of, and also became a major place to come for work, uh, a lot of jobs and things like that. During that time, we went through this major building boom, as I think most towns did, and uh, they built a golf course up here. And the golf course is called the Redlands Mesa Golf Course, and there's a lot of history there, which you could look it up if you just uh, look up the Redlands Mesa Golf Course. But uh, it's also a, a golf community, meaning that it has a really nice... Uh, subdivision associated with it. So I thought I'd take you up to the top of the ridges, um, which used to be just uh, basically dirt, looked kind of like the Monument or Rabbit Valley area, uh, like eastern Utah kind of. Um, a really nice area, there's lots of dirt and everything, but now it's a subdivision. Um, but it's, uh, it's a new kind of subdivision here. So I just thought I'd show you, uh, this is the type of place, uh, the only place in Grand Junction where if you wanted to buy a two or three million dollar house, uh, this is where you would have to go. I don't know of anywhere else other than Loma that might have an area like Loma or Mac that may have uh, houses in that price range. Loma and Mac are also made, also went through a little bit of a boom and uh, that's where a lot of the work was, was out in, towards that direction. So, uh, so a lot of people built houses out in Loma and Mac as well. Uh, by no means are those, you know, major cities now, but they, they still have more buildings and more stuff going on there than they used to. Mac is the site of Country Jam and Rock Jam, where they bring, uh, you know, major stars here every year, like Brett Michaels and stuff. So, uh, I, you know, Pantera. No, Pantera wasn't there. I don't know. There's been lots of people there. Huey Lewis in the News. Stuff like that. Uh, Blake Shelton. Those sorts of people. Um... Then we've got, this is the offices up here for the subdivisions, and then these are all the Redlands Mesa houses, and they are kind of all spread out here. They're not packed together by any means, um, but they're close enough together that you can call this a subdivision. But, uh, you know, if I was gonna move somewhere into a nice house in Grand Junction and I had all the money I could afford to, or, uh, to afford one of these, this is probably where I'd go. I kind of dig these houses, they're really nice. They look the same on the inside. They're very uh, modern and you know earth tones, stone, all of those things. And there's a ton of them. Up every one of these streets, there's more houses like that. And they're just kind of all, like I said, separated. The best part about them is there's no lawns to mow. So this is really an excellent part of town to go if you hate mowing the lawn the way I do. I guess that's why I have three boys. I don't really, I haven't mowed the lawn in five or six years, so. But that's it. There's houses, like I said, they're kind of all over here. That one's got an observatory on the top of it. Um, these over here, just that's the house on the hill. Lots and lots of uh, expensive houses. It isn't. One thing that is interesting about this uh, Redlands Mesa area is as you look at all these houses, I told you it was a golf course, but the golf course is fairly well hidden down into the, I don't want to say ravine, but down into the, the divots of the land all over here um, is where you'll find the golf course. It's not a very good place to golf uh, if you don't enjoy a challenge because if you hit the wrong way one way or the other and don't get it all the way across from you know these dips uh, then of course you hit rocks and your ball bounces way off and it is hard to see where the next hole is. Uh, you can't do it without some sort of chart to guide you along the way. Um, but it's it is an interesting place to golf. Here's kind of a nice panorama of all the houses going back the other direction down the road I was just on. You see they're just kind of all out over there. 
Grand Junction now has in the mall they have a Cabela's and then there's also a Sportsman's Warehouse and an REI and uh, and Gene Taylor died a few years died a year or two ago and uh, so now Gene Taylor's is out of business that's one of the sadder parts of this whole thing is that uh, you know that was really he's just a good guy with a really loyal uh, dedication to Grand Junction in this area and uh, it's kind of sad to see him go although uh, he still is his family and his name is still associated with a lot of stuff around town uh, both in sports and just you know all through town so his name's still out there but it is sad to see Gene Taylor's finally shut down when you come to Grand Junction if you we're kind of back where we were earlier here's the American furniture uh, when you come to Grand Junction to avoid the road construction on 6 and 50, uh, you can take these back roads behind the uh, new Walmart, the Rimrock, the Rimrock Walmart. Uh, there's some back roads behind there that can allow you to get around, uh, kind of cutting through this Rimrock Walmart parking lot. Um, you can get to all those little frontage roads, and you can get almost all, well, you can get all the way to the mall um, or all the way back down to uh, First and Grand. Um, by taking these roads so just just know there are some shortcuts there avoiding the road construction on 6 and 50 a few more stop signs or things like that but much much easier than than uh, taking 6 and 50 through the road construction yeah. the fuel lights fuel lights on I usually get gas at Sam's Club it's the cheapest place in town to get gas um, and uh, one thing they've done at the Sam's Club parking lot is put a roundabout in the middle of it. Now in the early, no, late 90s, they went through and put roundabouts all over this town. So you'll see several of them. Um, it's really weird. You know, you can't put round things in a square town. That's what they say, and uh, that's what happened here. But you'll see roundabouts everywhere you go. And I'm going to get some gas. Back up. I'm not going to tour all of Mesa College or CMU's campus. But you'll be able to see here over on the left how different things are. This is the uh, CMU campus coming up over here on the left. Those are dorms. And there's a lot of them. Lots and lots of new buildings. I think there's only three or four buildings of the major classroom area, the library, things like that. There's only three or four buildings that are still standing. Houston just had a major renovation. Uh, the library is there, but other than that, not many of the previous buildings are even there for those of you who went to CMU or were on campus during high school. This is Stoker Stadium now. Uh, last year, they really renovated some stuff, gave it a new press box, all sorts of stuff. They're still working on it. The weird part is they didn't really add that much more seating. They mostly just made it nicer. There's actually box seats and stuff like that up there. Uh, for the people who want to pay extra. There's a Daylight Donuts over here. The Pizza Hut now has a, is now a wing street also as most of the Pizza Huts are going. The Lincoln Park Golf Course is still here, as is the Monument Inn. Some of you might enjoy staying that little, uh, mon don't do it. Uh, let's see, then we've got uh, Burger King, all that typical stuff over on this side. We still have Lincoln Park Golf Course, the Wendy's, the Village Inn, Village Inn is still there, although there's still the one by the airport as well. A little bit better place to go if you're looking for late night munchy food. Um, big car dealers over here on the right is going to be Teller, Ar Teller Arms. And Teller Arms, of course, is where Hastings is and not much else. There is a dollar store there. So Hastings and the dollar store are where you'd go. And there is a big lots. So yeah, you got your, you got all your essentials there: your Dollar Tree, Big Lots, and uh, and Hastings. The Hobby Lobby, as I mentioned before, went through the other end of town. Uh, Weenie Hut is still here, and uh, then there's a place called Red Cliff Point, which has the Party Land USA, and uh, Tuesday Morning. That's about it. So we have Big Lots and Tuesday Morning right across the street from each other. It's really convenient for when you want to buy something that uh, other stores couldn't sell. Um, and also here's uh, Kmart. It's big Kmart. Still, it's smaller than Walmart. Discount tires. Lots of bank stuff. The old city market 
Eastgate City Market is out of business and now is the call center for a place called StarTech, which I don't even remember what they do. I think they do tech support and stuff like that. It's a call center uh, that, that uh, shops itself out um, for other businesses who need call centers. Over here on the side is Solaris Square, one of those shopping centers that looks really neat, but no one's ever actually gone in there, I don't think. I don't know if anybody has ever shopped there for anything that they do there. Um, there's an Aaron's Rent-A-Center. That used to be a lot of different stuff. There's where your payday loans can be cashed. Here's a hibachi and sushi place. I did actually eat there once. It wasn't that bad, but I've never been back, so I guess that says what it needs to say. There's a Carl's over here. AutoZone, J&M Aquatics, and a little strip mall. This is where you can usually find, uh, depending on the month or time of year or whatever, there's almost always a second-hand store, a liquor store, a pawn shop, and an insurance agent. And there is a Mexican market there. I haven't been in that one, but it's probably pretty good stuff. Um, then down here, this is Texas Roadhouse. This is one of the favorite uh, dining establishments for families that uh, you know can afford a $60 dinner once in a while. Um, and uh, there's the Hooters. You gotta have one of those, I guess. So there's the Hooters. Over here, this is the Ghetto Walmart. Now, one thing about the Ghetto Walmart, it's fun to visit, um, but uh, and both Walmarts are 24 hours, but I would recommend during a certain 12 hour period uh, overnight, uh, not shopping there unless you have your nine millimeter with you. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Lots of strange, strange folk come out to the ghetto Walmart in the middle of the night. But it's fun to go there if you're up late and this into town and want to see some people. Um, now this is something cool. This is 29 Road. And 29 Road used to end at, uh, I think D Road, just right down the street. But now it goes all the way to Orchard Mesa. So if you need a shortcut to get to Orchard Mesa and you're on this east end of town, 29 Road is a very pretty way to go, has a nice uh, overpass over it, and uh, you'll get there a lot quicker than having to drive all the way down to 32 Road like we had to when we were in high school, uh, you know, for all those trips we made to Orchard Mesa. See, there's your bridge right there. Your overpass going over the train tracks. And here we go. I'm not going to record much longer here. I'm just going to take us up to about where Central High School is. Um, because there's really nothing else. 32 Road basically looks the same as it always did. It has a Taco Bell there and shopping centers. It's a great place to get farm supplies. There's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, there's a Habitat for Humanity Restore here. Uh, that's always been a Mexican or a Chinese food place, and it still is. I think it's a taqueria now. And uh, let's see, then we're about done. The rest of the town gets pretty shot down on this end. The furniture stores, the Ashley Furniture is out of business. Um, the uh, government buildings are down here, like Health and Human Services and the Unemployment Center and all of those things. The Peachtree True Value is still here, but I'm pretty sure not many of you ever went in there. Um, and uh, we're just about there to the end of anything that's changed in Grand Junction. The rest of this place is pretty much in a, it's a time warp. Uh, it's not going to be much different at all than what... Uh, what it was when we lived here in 1993.